Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Morning Heart Devotion. To start off, let's offer a greeting about our heavenly parents and true parents. 정진 사모님께 경배 바로. And now to lead us through the family pledge, I'd like to invite our Reverend Milhan Stevens. 가정 맹세 일 자녀급 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고. 본향 땅을 찾아 본연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 창건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 이 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어. 가정에서는 효자, 국가에서는 충신, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. <웃음> 3. 천여국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 천여국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상 세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 전여급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 찬운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 전여급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 번연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 찬여급 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 찬여급 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙 절대 사랑 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you, Reverend Milha Stevens. And now to open us up in prayer, I'd like to ask uh, Stephen Gab. Stephen Gab. Good morning, brothers and sisters, Dr. Young, uh, everyone, let's join in prayer. Hello, Pumunum Gua, Cham Pumunumi, Kamsandra, Kamsandra. Dear loving Heavenly Parent, we come before you in repentance because. There is still so much to do to complete your providence of total salvation. Every day, this is on our true mother's mind if we don't feel her seriousness. Today, April the 4th, 2022, you've woken us up to begin a completely new day. What we make of this day will be our choice. We are grateful that every morning you give us this special opportunity to meet brothers and sisters in this one family under God and to hear your words and to think your thoughts through studying divine principle and true parents' words brought to us at such a great price. Our true father and true mother have had to go through the hell of betrayal, persecution, imprisonment, and even torture to be able to pay the price of making a new beginning on this earth. They've even opened up salvation for our ancestors in the spirit world. Much of our world is still suffering and in pain. We are so blessed to live in a free society where we can breathe, where we can walk down the street without fear of losing our life. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the conflict areas of the world, especially Ukraine, 
where the people of Ukraine of many colors and creeds are suffering and dying. Also, many Russian soldiers are dying. All God's children are suffering needlessly in that country. We ask earnestly that there be some way to stop this war and that peace can return to that land. Your family is gathering this morning to offer their sincerity and their John Son to you with the hope that our conditions will move the heart of the spirit world, not only in North America, but all over this world. We long for all humankind to hear these words of truth and know for a surety that you exist and that you long to live with us again as your originally purpose for humanity, to be our parent, our father and our mother. You wanted that kind of relationship with your children we have to let go of our ego, of our masks, and allow you to melt our hearts, to dwell with us at every step. We want to find ways to comfort you, but we get lost in our self-centeredness. Help us to break through our own limitations, to reach out to others who are in greater need than ourselves. All the world needs to discover you in every sunrise and every sunset, to see the goodness in the people around us, and to lift up those who need a helping hand. Please speak through Dr. Young, as well as those we meet today. Share your longing heart with us so that we too can share it with the world. I report all these things in the names of all of those gathered here on this call, the names of Stephen and Constance Gab, a blessed central family of Chamalbrook. Aju, Aju, Amen. Aju, Aju, thank you, Stephen. You put so much your heart and Changsung to your prayer. I miss your wife, Connie. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank Stephen you. Thank, Thank you. God you. bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Stephen. Like Dr. Young said, you put so much into the prayer, we could really feel it. Thank you. All right, brothers and sisters, we're going to jump straight into our gratitude sharing. So just take a moment to think about what you're grateful for this morning and uh, share with whoever you're paired in a breakout with. If you're by yourself, just take this time to reflect on that or fill out your own gratitude general. We'll see you all in seven minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a good sharing and great sharing in your breakout. I was with Ali Majuba. Ali, uh, great sharing always with them. And also Ruth Eva Kono. Uh, I'd like to invite up Ruth. Ruth Eva, if you could please, uh, Ruth Kono, if you could please unmute and share with us your gratitude points this morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. So. Ruth Eva. Yes, good morning, Dr. Young. How yeah. are you? So happy to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very grateful for your wonderful smile every morning. Ah, I'm right so, at the... <laughs> so happy to see your smile too. Thank you. Right in the comfort of our home. That's, that's a very big thing to be thankful for. <laughs> and uh, so, Mike, that, that's really... a. Um, I think important, you know, for us to have good leadership and uh, to really give us aware awareness of true parent speech, you know, and because I have had the opportunity of experiencing true parents in mm -hmm. Korea right after my blessing, 89, mm -hmm. and, um, and true father and, and true mother, you know, they give us such an awareness of um, how to take care of, of, of uh, our nature the ocean, and then you see how uh, people recklessly, you know, for profit, scraping out the ocean. Mm -hmm. And then we have like this wonderful farm in Uruguay that even succeeded in um, fishing, you know, to um, harvest fish right in our backyard, fish farming. Yeah. And the fish that, that, I mean, I don't know what kind of fishes they have there, but it just like is amazing, you know, the possibilities, you know, because then you want to eat fish, maybe look or uh, look at possibilities of how you can do your own fish farming, you know, and uh, support each other as a community, you know. And also I have a big backyard, so I'm growing my own food there. I have a lot of trees and, and um, veggies. And I think this is really the future because our food in America is so poisoned. They're using hundreds of chemicals. And I was also suggesting to look at documentations, you know, for instance, kiss the ground and uh, how to truly farm with not much effort. So anyway, so I'm just happy to see you, Dr. Young, and yeah. for all, you know, the, the, the information that, that we get every morning, you know, to really yeah, thank you. witness. Thank you. <laughs> Lucy, Eva, do you are really the same concern as a true mother and true father. You are beautiful daughter. Wow. Thank you so much. Lucy, Eva. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Aunt Ruth, Eva. Uh, Ruth, for sharing with us this morning. All right, next, I'd like to call on uh, from, I believe, North Carolina, Jorge Suelo Espinosa. Oh, my God. I wasn't even in your group. I go, uh, good morning. Okay, Georgie. Pangapsamida. Young Hojang Nim Pangapsamida. Thank you. Um, anyway, today we had a breakout room with uh, Yuji Michiko san, Yuji san, and Michiko san, I think from sub region two. Uh, and they were sharing about, um, they were visiting a minister and uh, they gave a blessing of marriage to the whole congregation. I think it was a big success. I forgot what state they're in, uh, some ruins, sub region too. And we had, um, I think another brother from New Hampshire and we were talking about Ukraine and Russia. I feel very sorry because just looking at, um, human history, Russia and China always in the attacking position. I don't know why. I feel very sorry about that. But at the same time, I think like uh, I'm grateful that the people in the Ukraine are, I don't know the whole story, but I think that they are kind of fighting back and not giving up. And so I'm happy that uh, also our brothers and sisters in the United States, we're offering Jung Sung and devotion, some of us sending donations, so I think that's good. So I'm also very happy uh, to be here in a morning devotion. And I love you all so much. Kamsamida. Thank you, Georgia Espinosa. 
When do you want to show your spouse? I'm really Ajik, Ajikimida, Ajikimida. I'm really waiting for that. Me too, me too, me too. Yeah, okay. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge, for sharing with us. All right, brothers and sisters, we're going to jump straight into our morning devotion today. So let's prepare our hearts and mind to receive our heavenly inspiration through Dr. Chun Chik Young. <clears throat> 안녕하세요. Good morning. Good morning. My dear brothers and sisters, the clergy and members of office, 안녕하십니까? Wow, I truly miss all of you. Yesterday, I had a really great time with our brothers and sisters. Uh, I attended a Sunday service at the Clifton Church in New Jersey. Our president now gave me share the 2022 national goal, and I share several important points after listening to testimonies from two members. Uh, it was a really beautiful time. Wow, beautiful community. I, I, I'm so happy to see each one of them in person, physically. Wow, they are really very beautiful uh, people. Atmosphere is just such a warm. I feel like I already feel that a small kingdom of heaven is there. It was a good photo. And then I had a lunch meeting with, with the ministry team leaders of the Clifton Church. Now give me love, sushi, sashimi so much. Anyone invited, uh, want to invite Naokimi? You just prepare sushi and sashimi and then he, he can be there anytime. He loves sashimi and sushi so much. And I visited Carp Center and bless, blessed it as a user center. My brothers and sisters, I really see some of the, about the new uh, person just, just join our church. I really glad to see each one of them. Today, I'd like to talk about the, the need for environmental protection from True Mother's Anthology Book One. <laughs> so let's invite our beautiful honey. The need for environmental protection. We must once again establish the environment that Heavenly Parent desired to see at the outset. Today, people are causing many environmental problems all over the world. The earth is diseased. That is why I will work to protect a healthy planet Earth and create a natural environment that will provide healthy nutrients for the peoples of the future. In order to survive, we must consume the necessary nutrients. We must eat to live. The food we eat should be derived from crops that have been cultivated in the cleanest and healthiest manner. As it stands today, people around the world in the food production industry generally make it their priority to find ways to increase their profits rather than being motivated to maintain the health of their fellow human beings. For example, they inject cows with hormones so that they will grow larger and produce more beef. But the hormones have an effect on the people who consume the beef. Producers seem not to be concerned about this. They think solely of their own interest. That, that is why, especially on the restored lands of Africa, we can protect the health of all people through scientific and optimal methods of planting crops or raising cattle on their vast lands. In order to establish one great human family under true parents, a healthy human family, we must develop nations prepared to accomplish this both internally and externally. South America also has plenty of land we have been raising cattle on our land in South America. We should not only raise cattle on South America's vast open spaces, but plant medicinal herbs, wholesome vegetables, or fruit trees 
for the sake of our health. We can then advance toward protecting the health of all people on earth. Yeah. From mother always warns humankind with a very serious mind about environmental pollution and destruction because she wants to create a healthy planet. Therefore, Trauma Mother has a strong determination to create and protect a healthy planet. She is also thinking about creating a natural environment that can provide true nutrients to humans. For example, she's looking for the ways to grow up clean uh, crops and to grow crops and raise uh, livestock in the most scientific and ideal way on African soil. Really, mother loved the, uh, he, she really want to protect the, you know, you know uh, uh, the uh, earthly world, how really uh, can keep God's original standard. So we really need to educate everybody the philosophy of true parents living for the sake of others. Everybody practice the philosophy of the living for the sake of others. That is the way we can protect nature. And then we can really bring back to God's original nature. And continuously as study father's word, this word uh, come from Chen Songgyang. Please. Do you want to follow the life of true parents who, with God's love, have been trying to liberate the realm of nature that has been in distress? Or do you want to live a closed life in the city, polluting the air, destroying the environment, and blocking your children's emotional growth? Since I love nature so much, and all Unification Church members love to follow me, it is possible for us to build an ideal kingdom in harmony with nature. So I am going to build a museum and have every type of creation exhibited there. I will prepare specimens and put them on display. I will create a farm for the fruits of the sea where you feel you are in nature just by looking at it. I will begin a movement to create museums in each town as a symbol of love for animals. Then the town with the most species can become a world renowned tourist spot. I will also gather many species of plants and trees to put on display. In an ideal world, there would be no corruption or inequality and no fall. Such a world comes about only when true love is practiced. The practice of true love is a prerequisite. Our movement is historic in building a community of true love among people of different races and traditions. The world is facing a serious environmental crisis. Environmental pollution and the destruction of nature are insults to the beautiful, holy world created by God. People without true love use the natural world for their own selfish purposes. One of the serious results of the fall is that because Adam and Eve failed to inherit God's true love, people have been unable to love one another, love animals, and love the land. All of creation is longing for people's true love. Yes, all of creation is longing for people's true love. Nature is in the realm that has been in uh, the stress for not having met its true master due to the fall of man. Human must liberate the three great realms while living on earth. First, we must liberate the realm of the nature that has been in uh, distress. We must return nature to its original state created by God. Therefore, we must first achieve the environmental realm of heaven. Second, we must liberate the realm of the humans that has been in uh, distress. 
the the realm of God that has been in uh, distress must be liberated. The world is facing a serious environmental crisis. Environmental pollution and damage to nature are like uh, insulting the beautiful and sacred uh, sacred world God created. A person without true love only see the natural world as a mere selfish uh, exploit. All things are looking forward to the true love humans. Beautiful guidance by true parents. Living divine principle. Uh, today, uh, our second session about talking about family completion is the completion of the realm of the royal family. So let's study Father's word. The person who can enter heaven. Those who will enter heaven must first pass through the gates as God's princes and princesses, as the beloved children of God's lineage and the royal descendants of his kingdom. Where is heaven? It is the place where the royal descendants and members of this royal family enter. Lineal and collateral descendants of exemplary siblings' love will become one, form exemplary tribes and nations on earth, and with the dignity of a heavenly royal family, they will live and pass on naturally to a place called heaven. This content is very important, my brothers and sisters. Father talking about you need to read a few times, I think, otherwise you can understand what he's talking about. Who can enter the kingdom of heaven? Father said, you have to be a direct child of God. These words say that your lineage must be converted by receiving the blessing. Anyone who receives the blessing will receive the gift of becoming a direct child of God. That's why anyone receives the blessing, you know, become God's direct child. And when you, are, uh, when you pass away, directly go to the realm of the heaven. But not exactly a real kingdom of heaven, you know, because we are not yet fulfilled in many conditions. But the realm of the heaven, anyone receives the blessing. This is an incredible, you know, gift given by our true parents. You, secondly, you have to be a, a royal descendant of the kingdom of heaven. What are you talking about, a royal descendant? You should go through the, the gates of the princess and princesses before God. This means that everyone must go through the process of the becoming a citizen of the Chanilgu by being registered in Chanbo 1 and acquiring the realm of the royal family of God. You have to live with honor in the place where you have form on exemplary tribes and nation owners. Very important word here. Again, I'd like to mention to you, you have to live with honor in the place where you have form on exemplary tribes, exemplary tribes and nation owners. Here on exemplary tribes should be a person who has fulfilled the HTA mission centering on their own tribe. And the place where the nation is a form is a standard of the finding and establishing Chanilgu. So True Parents already proclaimed the Chanilgu, already uh, the era of the Chanilgu already began, right? My brother says, exemplary tribe means what? You have to be, you have to fulfill your HT ambition. Huh? So this is the way you can uh, live with honor in the place where you have a form on exemplary tribes and nation owners, my brothers and sisters. Okay, next content. Heaven can only be entered after restoring the four great realms. <clears throat> you cannot enter the heavenly kingdom without having loved the world. You should love the world as your own 
and love all of humankind as your own family. Unless you feel the pain and suffering of the world in the same way that God does, you cannot become the princes or princesses of the heavenly realm. That's who God is. You need to be able to stand in the position of the princes and princesses of that kind of father. You need to accomplish restoration of the right of the eldest son, the right of the parent, and the right of kingship. After that, you can restore the realm of the royal family. Yes. First, the, uh, the inner condition. First, the inner condition for entering the kingdom of heaven. You cannot enter heaven without loving the world. You need to stand in a position where you can love the world as your own the people of the world as your family and feel their pain as your pain instead of, of God. Wow. I really reflect on this content because I have that kind of heart and mind. When, you know, the whole world feel pain, can I feel as my own pain or not? Those who enter kingdom of heaven, they have that kind of the heart. When you see Ukraine situation, what do you feel? Can you feel the pain or not? The world issue become my own issues or not? Those who are uh, the miserable, you know, in the world, can you feel, you know, same kind of a concern and, you know, can feel there are difficulties? So Father said, what is the inner condition for entering kingdom of heaven? You need to have that kind of a heart, you know? Really, all mankind, really they are my family members. They're really my own brothers and sisters. Do you feel that? This is the inner condition for entering kingdom of heaven. And then next is what? Then what are the next conditions? You must rest to four great realms. Here, Father, talking about a very important thing, my brothers and sisters. You must rest to the four great realms. There's the restoration of the right of the elder son, a restoration of the uh, right of the parents, restoration of the right of the kingship, and restoration of the realm of the royal family. True parents proclaim the Chonilgu having already accomplished the restoration of the right of the elder son, restoration of the right of the parents, and restoration of the right of the kingship. On top of the victory of these three great realms, anyone who completes the heavenly tribal messiah mission is entitled to enter the realm of the royal family. So already true parents are completed. Already he got a victory. So in order to enable father's victory, we are just only focus on the last one, how to fulfill heavenly tribal message. You know, that is the entering the realm of the royal family. Next. Conclusion of the whole providence of restoration. Without the restoration of the right of the eldest son, there can be no restoration of the parents. Since the original siblings were lost, we can rise to the position of parents only on the foundation of having found the original siblings again. Restoration is done by going the reverse way. Once the parents are found again, the parents, Adam and Eve, become the king. With the right of kingship centered on the tribe, a collateral relation by blood emerges and a single clan is formed, whereby the realm of the royal family is established. This is the entire conclusion of the providence of restoration. Because this is the traditional conclusion, everyone needs to follow this path. Only then can we become the sons and daughters of true parents. Yes. In conclusion, the overall conclusion of the providence of restoration is that everyone 
must complete the realm of the royal family. The position to acquire the realm of the royal family is the position to complete heavenly tribal messiahship centered on one's tribe. True parents are found and established the right of the elder son, the right of the parents, the right of the kings. But creating realm of the royal family is the responsibility of all our families. This is the fulfill the heavenly tribal messiah mission. So without fulfilling heavenly tribal messiah mission, we cannot enter the realm of the royal family, my brothers and sisters. That's why as the blessed family, we need to do formation stage one. We need to have experience for great realms of one. And secondly, we need to have experience of three great kingships. And what is the final mission? To fulfill heavenly tribal messiah mission and then enter the God's royal family. Very clear, my brothers and sisters. Even though Father Tori and here and there, conclusion is very simple. Something like that, you know. When we fulfill our heavenly tribal messiah mission, that is a really become royal family. And then we, we that is a really, God is our king. Do you understand what I mean? God is our greatest king. Internally, we call him our heavenly parents, but external his position, he's a ruler of the cosmos. He's the king of king. He's the greatest king. We are position of the prince and princess, my brothers and sisters. So that's why we our family originally we come from our background, come from God's royal blood lineage. We came from God's royal blood lineage. So we need to go back to God's royal blood lineage. Blood lineage. So even though you receive the blessing, but you are not yet joining, not yet entering the God's royal family without fulfilling heavenly tribal messiahship. And then you need you need to really register in Chanbo what? Understand what I mean? You need to no matter what. That's why I really concern all you know. Uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, really, no matter what, my brother, need to hurry up to fulfill your heavenly tribal messiah mission, okay? And then, you know, go to the church, to church, or on the street, you're giving the holy wine, 430 couples, and then really select among 430 couples who are really become member, at least the minimum 43 couples, and then let them really become member, my brother says, and then register, uh, you know, uh, Chanbo one, then already you have, you got a, you can get citizenship of the, you know, heaven. That is the condition to enter the royal family. Are you, are you clear or not? <laughs> I study a lot, then that is the conclusion, my brothers and sisters. Uh, today's uh, youth ministry, why we can't uh, relate to the whole, my brothers and sisters. So yesterday I talked about the relationship between one person and the whole. We must know that in our life of faith, since I represent the whole, the existence of me must become a being that is absolutely needed by the whole. Therefore, I must become a being that is indispensable in front of the whole. It is the fact that I am the kind of being who does not, uh, does not matter if they are there they are, they are or not. We have to be an indispensable person. Understand what I mean? Because I relate to the whole. Really, am I really indispensable person to everyone or not? You know, we are so precious being, not useless being. That's why we have to be an indispensable uh, the being to anyone. You know, I, I do not need you. You are, you are nothing dealing with me. Then I have no value. That's why we really need to know that I, we have our own value. One person, 
you know, connect to the whole. I am representative of the whole. Yesterday, I emphasized again and again about that matter. In the family, within the Four Position Foundation, I am me who exists for the sake of the whole family. For the more, it is a fact that I am in, uh, I am in indispensable being that is absolutely necessary to my society, nation, and world. I can never see if I know that I am for the whole, I stumble because I think that I am only for myself. If you know that, if you treat yourself, uh, I am the representative as a whole, nobody commits in. You are not alone. Already yesterday I mentioned, according to Father's word, there are 20,000 minimum, 30,000 people are following to each one of the Unification Church members. 20,000, 30,000 ancestors, spirit follow you. That's why you are not alone at all. You are representative of your ancestor as well. Wow. That's why, what's the sin? Treat yourself just as, as alone. That's the sin. You are representative of the whole, my brothers and sisters. I shouldn't know that I represent my family, my tribe, my nation, and the world, and my cos uh, the, the cosmos. Therefore, uh, you should know that one person represents the whole, not just one being. The perfection of Adam represents the perfection of the whole of mankind and the perfection of the universe as a whole. That's why when he failed, everything failed, all mankind failed, the entire universe got a big damage. Today, I'd like to talk about the why we can't relate to the whole. Today title, why we can't relate to the whole. Okay, have any honey? Why we can't relate to the whole. An unnecessary existence has nothing to do with the whole. Therefore, fallen people usually ignore their individual selves. They easily feel inferior, centered on themselves. They think things like, well, what would someone like me do? Why don't I have anything properly? What can a being like me do? Like this, they admit that they are unnecessary and despise themselves. In this way, they think that they are unnecessary to others, so they cannot relate to the whole and often become pessimistic about themselves. A person who is often pessimistic is someone who ignores the smallest things and can see themselves as good for nothing. In poor countries, people think highly of others who did things around the world or received a doctorate from a foreign country. People who sincerely studied step-by-step step in their own country are simply despised. People value others who got a degree in a foreign country and wrote a doctoral thesis abroad. Unnecessary existence has nothing to do with the whole. Most the people who feel they are unnecessary, in, unnecessary, ignore themselves and feel inferior because they think that uh, they are unnecessary to others. They cannot relate to the whole and often become uh, pessimistic about themselves. A person who is often pessimistic is one who ignores the smallest task given to them. They do not value their own responsibilities and easily compare themselves with others and become uh, uh, pessimistic. Such a person is, in a word, someone who lacks sincerity. People who feel that they are un unnecessary are those who are compare themselves to others when something goes wrong, blame the environment or their parents and then view others as higher. Wow, my brothers and sisters, you need to know that your own value. You, you have to be really in this, uh, in this uh, 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 principle person. Really, you are very, very, very much a necessary person. 
You are not an unnecessary person, my brothers and sisters. Continue. Am I playing a necessary role within my sphere of affiliation? How do I relate with the whole? Indeed, it seems that one makes a lot of mistakes because they focus too much on external conditions rather than on how much artistic foundation they are building in their field. Treat each person as a whole and build good relationships. As the saying goes, you can't cross the threshold and will make mistakes if you build a bad relationship. Most people make a mistake because they can't overcome the last moment. A person who finds the process of ordeals tiring will eventually become a person who cannot trust even heaven. The people around them also cannot trust them. Yes. A person who cannot relate to the whole is easily pessimistic about himself and ignores himself. Makes a lot of mistakes because he focuses too much on external condition. Very external. Of course, I need to treat myself as a whole, but I need to go further and treat each person I relate to as a whole, as a whole, and build a relationship very well. Even when tests and trials come, those who find the uh, process of the ordeal uh, uh, tiring are uh, those who are not sincere in their given uh, uh, reality. They feel the ordeal is a long, a long because they are not loyal to the reality and are easily caught up in, in fantasy. No matter how difficult the reality we face, those who think that this is God's will, that this is the destiny that we must bear and have a victory every day will eventually overcome everything. When True Father entered the Hungnam prison, he did not blame anyone at all. He served the surrounding uh, prisoners and gave them food and worked harder than them. And therefore the people around them testified that Reverend Moon was like a, a person born. He was born for the Hungnam prison. He, you know, he came to, uh, or came to the earth as the Messiah, so many things to do. But when he was in Hungnam prison, this is a God's will. Now my current mission is just serving the prisoners and work harder than any other one because this is a God's will. I need to pay the indemnity in Hungnam prison willingly, happily, voluntarily. I need to do. He never feel any boring. Even in prison environment, such a Hungnam prison profile, loved his uh, environment, really loved the people, and was faithful to his assigned responsibilities. He got uh, some award from the even from communist leaders because he worked harder than any other one. Wow, I really respect father. I really admire father. Can you imagine about that? He never complained. You know what is God's will? Now what you are doing at present moment, this is God's will. Do not think God's will in some way. Those who are involving as a full-time doing fundraising or witnessing or visit to the Christian church, do you think this is only God's will? Never think like that. What you are doing currently in some working place, in the camp, as a student, you are studying at the school, what you are doing, you need to think that this is God's will. Came back home and relate to your brothers and sisters, your own children, take care of your own parents, grandparents. You need to think this is God's will. What you are doing, this is God's will. This is a father's attitude. 
That's why he never miss to anyone. And he, uh, you know, he, you know, how to say, uh, relate to anyone and serving them. You are, you are the representative of the whole. I am also representative of the whole. Father said he lived the, lived the day to day, uh, day, day to day without thinking it was tiring in Hunan prison. He never feel it is tiring. Those who feel very tiring, that means something wrong. You do not think this is God's will. Wow, I really, I really admire my father's life. When he go to the ocean, Turma often testified that when father go to ocean, he was one for ocean, like he's a fisherman. He completely concentrated fishing. When he go to the factory, you know, to you know to check something there, he's really he's like a man of the that factory, of the boss of that factory. Wow, father is a total concentration. Right? And then those around me. Very nearest person, you relate to the, the, the nearest person, you know, really treat them. They are godly people. Not only loving my able, not loving leaders or somebody and respect Christian minister, not like this. Those who are nearest the person, treat them as the godly people heavenly people that's why he don't he does not waste any moment any time so each second so precious even dealing with the small things this is god's will even small things sleeping eating you know whatever he doing everything he think this is god's will my brothers and sisters Continue. People who are pessimistic about themselves and live without relating with the whole become self-indulgent and bring danger. Look at Jacob who suffered for 20 years with the standard he promised to heaven and Joseph who had a dream and went down the bitter road for 30 years without changing. What would Joseph have thought of his life as he spent 30 years in prison? Suppose we spend 30 years in prison, we would think our life is over. How can anyone expect any hope or pleasure out of it? It's hard to pass three years, but isn't it surprising to be able to spend 30 years looking forward to the day of hope with just one dream? Wow. A person who is pessimistic about himself and cannot relate to the whole becomes self-indulgent and dangerous. What was the secret of Jacob's victory while working as a servant for 21 years at the house of Laban, his maternal uncle? He loved the people he walked with more than anyone else did. And he worked harder than his master with the spirit of the ownership in the work assigned to him. He was really, really sincere. That's why he completely paid his indemnity to 21 years. Look at Joseph. Joseph was in prison and he did not know when he would come out. He spent a long time in prison, maybe at least three to five years. Anyone in that situation would, uh, would have been pessimistic and thought it was all over for them. However, Joseph had a dream that was given to him once by heaven. And although he lived in prison, it did not change at all until he was over 30 years old. As you mentioned in the Bible, Joseph received approval from the chief of, uh, chief of prison, prison guard and took over even his duties. You know, Joseph's attitude, same as father's attitude. He never feel boring. He's serving each one of the prisoners, take care of them, working very hard. That's why he trusts so much by the people. 
Wow. It is beautiful, right? Next. Relationships with people and the relationship I currently have with my work is precious. If you know how precious a relationship is, you should regard it as precious as life and have hope even when you are about to die. If one dies with hope until the end in this way, although they might have failed on this earth, they might be recognized in the spirit world for their amazing work. A person like Jesus became a, a great meritorious person by standing in a position where he died for the people, even when he was on the cross for the Father's will. How amazing is Jesus who overcame death to the end, who thought of his relationship with heaven when he was called as his life, even at a point of failure and disappointment. Even the martyrs did not change their rising and revived hearts from where when they were full of heavenly grace. So how much did they cherish their relationship with heaven? It was truly doing the duty of one person. Relationship with people and the work you are currently doing are important. Like Joseph, if you know how precious your relationship with the people around you are. You regard them as a value, as a life, and go with hope, even when you are about to die. All blessings come through relationship, my brothers and sisters. There are no blessings that come from not having a relationship. After all, it was a true relationship that Joseph was released from prison and became prime minister. Joseph thought that his relationship with the work uh, was God's work, and he loved and served each and every one of them, thinking that each person was sent by God. The reason we cannot have the relationship with the whole is because we do not have the mind that we represent, we represent the whole, and the other person represent the whole as well. We, we must not forget that we are, being, we are beings that represent, represent the whole. So always we need to have that kind of thing. I am not all, and I am not alone. I am re representative of the whole world and whole nation, whole family. Wow. If we think like that, we cannot be selfish person anymore. And we really learn today very beautiful things. Right, my brothers and sisters? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Young, for strong light. today's morning devotion. Uh, there is so much you covered. I really appreciate the points on the four great realms of heart, what we have to do before we enter the kingdom of heaven, uh, but also in just creating and understanding the, the importance of our relationships. Run scissors, we're going to jump straight into our breakouts now. Uh, if you have anything you'd like to share, please share with it your the people in your breakout so we can all grow in our understanding of what we heard today. We'll see you all in seven minutes.
and welcome back everyone hope you had a wonderful great sharing in your breakout i was with um i was with a lot of people <laughs> say the least four or three others in uh, my breakout I'd like to first call on the alan saunders alan saunders and miss saunders to share with us a reflection from today's morning devotion um, I was reflecting on how Dr. Young told us that prayer is more listening than talking to God, and I've been practicing that lately, and we have a big window that faces a forest, and I've been just trying to sit and listen to God, and it's so hard. <laughs> I want to talk to God, and also I have all these thoughts like, oh, I want a cup of coffee, or I want to go do my laundry, or um, so I have to settle those thoughts down and just really listen for God's voice. And he said such beautiful things to me. Wow. He, he said, um, I was worried about my parents and spirit world. And he said, all is well. Mm. And I just, I feel like I'm going into the forest and into the depths of God's heart mm. and just asking him, who are you? I want to know you. I want to know you. Oh my and God. it's just been so beautiful. So thank you for that insight. If that was the only insight you ever gave me, Dr. Young, and you've given me many, that would have changed my life. It has. I just hearing your about your liberation, my tears come down. Right, you have met such a God. Really great. Thank you so much. Okay, go to the other. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Dr. Young. Good to see you again. Uh, yeah, for me, I was reflecting on what you were saying today of different challenging relationships and how it's easy to look at people and, and just judge them for who they are and their fallen nature and their issues. But then circling back around to what you said, there's relationships are very precious. And no matter where you are, there's, there's always people who know more or know less or can do more or less. So it, it is true, we have to really uh, love and, and care for them. And my other point was that when I was in Jardim after graduating from the seminary, went down there and our father was down there and he was so happy. Mm. Uh, the countryside of Jardim, if you're there at a certain time of year, it's like 110 degrees in the shade, it's huge mosquitoes, snakes, frogs that... <laughs> can blind you <laughs> and it, it's not externally it's not a very nice place but father was always so happy especially going out fishing for hours and hours um so and then compared to that when you see him at the united nations speaking or at these international U upf events at the latte hotel he has exactly the same attitude no no different just loving and serving people and giving and giving and giving so he had he definitely transcended the externals and i think that's a is definitely a lesson as you were talking about today for joseph and the father in the prison he just doesn't change because he's still giving in the connection with god is is uh, where he draws his energy not the external situation so thank you for your yeah ellen do you know how much lucky guy you are you have such a beautiful wife <laughs> Such a beautiful heart and mind and support you. Wow. You are really one of the lucky guy. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My ancestors, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm you, lucky God. too. I'm lucky too. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Sandra Couple, for sharing with us. Uh, next, I'd like to call on Dr. Thomas Ward, Dr. Thomas Ward, to share with us his reflection this morning. Well, that was a surprise. You just. Uh, 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 고맙습니다. <laughs> yeah, I um, I really appreciated what Dr. Young shared with us this morning. Um, each one of us is blessed to be an individual truth body. Yeah. And because we're each blessed with an individual truth body, we give God the opportunity to express a deep part of himself that he can never express again, except through us. Yeah. So I really was reminded of that this morning as Dr. Young shared with all of us that really this fundamental point, this, this connection between myself and the whole, what each of us, we can be able to bring to the whole is that part of 
us that really reflects an aspect of God's heart and personality that no one else has. No one else. We, it's, it's part of God's voice that has to be heard. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you expressed it so well this morning, Dr. Young. I really, really appreciate it. And it really stirred something inside of me, which I, I really felt uh, very grateful to you for, for sharing. So I thank you for that. And uh, I guess also um, I wanted to just say one other thing. I, I mean, for a long time, I, I was assuming that uh, coming every morning with Dr. Young, that that was my hundoke. And then one day Dr. Young clarified that's a part of it. But we also have to do our own hundoke every day as well, beyond what, what we're by coming to morning devotion each day. Mm-hmm. And what I, uh, I've really felt so much clarification by also doing that every single day. And uh, particularly right now, I'm, I'm, reading, uh, I'm reading the pledge every day over and over and over oh, again. Wow. I think it's something that really has to be printed deeply in my heart and remind, remind me about who I am and what I'm called to do, who my wife is, what we're called to do as a couple, what our family's called to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, those kinds of rules and laws, I think they just have to really settle into our spirit. As, oh, Dr. as Dr. Young said, it's, it's not enough that we have, um, how can I put it? It's, it's not enough to be, to be good. No, it, the, the point is actually to, to inherit the formula that God needs so that God can truly work through us in the way that he wants to. And I, I thank you also, Dr. Young, for reminding us about that every day. So um, that's my appreciation. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, Dr. Thomas Ward, uh, for your beautiful insight and sharing. You know, Dr. Ward, uh, you know, uh, whenever we are praising, uh, reciting the family praise every day, everything is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the essence of the divine principle. And then all fathers gave a speech more than 600 volumes more than 1,000 books. What the main content? Everything there in family pledge. Mm. That's why every sentence, when each number of the family pledge, whenever I recite, I feel so grateful. And I know what the mission, I know what should I focus. Sometimes I could not fulfill and I tears come down. Mm-hmm. That's why every morning, not just only, you know, you know, you know, the reciting the family page. When I think about each word, each sentence, so powerful and giving very clear direction what to do. That's why I really appreciate your father's, uh, like your father gave us such a beautiful family place. Thank you so much, Dr. Woods. Uh, you are the one who remind us, you know, the importance of the family place at Fundoke. Kamsamida, Dr. Ward, Kamsamida. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ward, for sharing. And Pastor Barbara said maybe Dr. Ian will go through the family pledge one by one. I think he did that sometime before. <laughs> All right, on to our announcements for today. Um, if you're feeling inspired, please feel free to invite people to join in this morning devotion experience. Invite them to join the Zoom, to watch on Facebook or on YouTube. They can just go to edu.familyfed.org to learn more. That's where you can also go to access all the previous morning devotions, um, as well as to donate. That's right. If you'd like to donate, there's a link right there. There's a link in the description of the video. And if you're in the Zoom room, right in the chat. So feel free to just look there, click it, and donate to support this ministry worldwide. And now on to our musical offering today. You hear him, he's a staple on Mondays. I'd like to invite up from Worcester, Mark Hanlon. Mark Hanlon. Good morning. Wow, okay, hello. Hello, Dr. Good morning, everyone. Wow, great, thank you. It's always happy to be here to see all of you, to come to Morning Devotion. It's such a special thing for all of us. Um, and. The last couple of days, I have to tell you, I've been thinking about Ukraine. It's uh, the the things that those people have done is just amazing. You know, it's like it's like a modern day David and Goliath. And I'm wondering, you know, where they got that spirit to do that. And I have to think that it has to come from true father and true mother. And so and so true mother's like that. She just she's just unstoppable. And so this song is a. Uh, kind of 
some like a tribute to true mother it's a it's called the the mississippi queen and it's a, a american folk song and uh, it's about a steamboat that goes up and down the mississippi and uh, it's a tr traditional thing and uh, people get on it they entertain themselves they they have a good time they fellowship they eat together but uh, true mother when you when you when you're with us we're you're when you're in morning devotion you're you're on this steamboat you're you're we're riding we're with true mother in this journey so mississippi queen oh it's also a song that uh it has it's you can participate all you have to do is uh sing back the song as i sing it to you uh, one little phrase at a time if you want to participate it's <clears throat> oh the mississippi queen heading up the mississippi oh the mississippi queen she's the queen of the west oh the mississippi queen Heading up the Mississippi The biggest steamboat that ever was afloat on the Mississippi River back home She's the daughter of the Grand Republic and the J.M. White She's the sister to the Delta Queen on a moonlit night Oh, the Mississippi Queen Heading up the Mississippi the Mississippi Queen, she's the Queen of the West. Oh, the Mississippi Queen, heading up the Mississippi. The biggest steamboat that ever was afloat on the Mississippi River back home. Pittsburgh, Zwickley, Point Pleasant, Huntington, Cincinnati, Louisville, Tell City, Evansville, Patuka, Carroll, Memphis, Greenville, Pittsburgh, Natchez, Nacogdoches, New Orleans. People all standing on a levee, watching for the Mississippi Queen, oh the Mississippi Queen, heading up the Mississippi, oh the Mississippi Queen. Oh, the Mississippi Queen, heading up the Mississippi. The biggest steamboat that ever was afloat on the Mississippi River back home. The biggest steamboat that ever was afloat on the Mississippi River back home. Wow, wow, Mark, really, wow. You need to come up more often and then sing a song. You are, you are a story. Your, your, your song is a beautiful story, always touching our heart. Thank you so much, Han Lon, Han, Han Hakja. Han Hakja Lon, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Uncle Mark. Yeah, your, your songs are always up the up. It uh, makes me feel like I'm on a road trip somewhere, somewhere in America. All right, on to our closing prayer. I'd like to call on, let's see. Good morning. Um, please join me in prayer. Good. Good morning, Holy Parents and our dearest two parents. Yes, I just want to thank you, Holy Parents, for yeah today um, receiving this morning devo being here on morning devotion with all of my uncles and aunties and brothers and sisters. And thank you, Holy Parents, for speaking through Dr. Young to give this message to us. And I'm also really grateful for these um, breakout rooms we go into to hear people's, or yes, their gratitudes and their reflections, Holy Parents. And yes, there's a lot that yeah we realized today um, how when we're focused on just ourselves and yeah, with the situation that we're put in or things that are put in front of us, sometimes it could be so easy to feel, oh man, this is the end. Um, but instead really seeing all of this is your plan, God, and um, there's a reason for everything. And, and you really trust us in the specific situations that we're put in. And yes, God, um, right now, yeah, everyone here, I pray that, yeah, that we could, um, that this could help everyone 
well, it definitely helped me. And I, it definitely is helping everyone. But anyway, yeah, I hope that, yeah, that we could re remember and come back to, um, yeah, how precious we each are to you and, and how each person around us too, they're all really precious as well. And I, I pray that, yeah, as we go about today too, that we can really see um, each moment as yeah, very meaningful and yes. And so, uh, yes, Holy Parents, I am just very full of gratitude and love constantly from you. And yes, I just want to offer it all up to you, Holy Parents. And so I want to offer this prayer in all of our names and in my name, Sri Matsuba, or you can cousin Matsuba, bless your family. Adieu. Aju, oh, thank you, Chirwe. Long time no see. Long time no see. And then Desiree, uh, you are uh, you are working in uh, the helping carp uh, activity in Washington. She joined. She joined carp um, and helping out carp DMV here in Maryland. Oh yeah, right, right. Oh, thank you so much. How to pronounce it? Desiree. Desiree. Ah, oh, so sorry. Okay, Chirwe-san, kamsamida. Thank you for your beautiful prayer. I love your you. Thank you. Kamsamida. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for closing us out in, uh, in prayer, Chirwe. It's great to see you both. All right, brothers and sisters, that wraps up today's morning devotion. Thank you for joining. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you all bright and early tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Happy Monday! Happy Monday!